summer of TIC-80. This is going to be two parts. I'm going to talk a little bit about what TIC-80 is and why people might care. And then what I'm picturing for what I'm calling the summer of TIC-80 uh, meetup group. So first, TIC-80, a retro fantasy computer. Um, it is kind of targeting two big things, nostalgia programming for people who remember the 8-bit. It isn't really like that. You know, a lot of the rough edges have been removed, and they replaced the whole basic assembly thing with Lua, which is much more user-friendly. Uh, and if you're not old enough to be nostalgic about that, then its big benefit is artificial limitations make it easier to get things done relatively quickly and not be indecisive. Uh, Pico 8 is something people might be, have been more likely to have heard of. It is more popular. Celeste, which was a hit game on a lot of platforms, started out on Pico 8 before being ported up to the big consoles. But Pico 8 is not widescreen. It does not support game pads. It is not open source. I don't, so it doesn't feel like as good of a fit, even though it's more popular. Programming them is incredibly similar. So the specs of the TIC-80 virtual home computer. It is 240 by 136 pixels. It is 16 colors, 256 sprites. A big one, anybody who saw my Game Boy talk, is this time you're allowed to actually draw to the frame buffer. That means a lot of things are so much easier that were real thi things, hoops to jump through for Game Boy programming. Uh, four channels of sound music and a limitation of 64K of code data. Um, that means their save files limit you to 64K of size. Uh, I don't think it limits you specifically to 64K of memory, uh, and it certainly gives you a lot more CPU power than you would have ever had in the old days. So there is a commercial version. It saves t in a text format. It allows you to export standalone games if you want to sell them. It's $10 on itch.io. This probably should have come later in the thing, but oh well. Um, I am curious, is it really a like fork, private fork that they keep, or is it just they package it differently depending on where they put the pre-made downloads? I've never dug into their source code to find that out. Uh, so some example games people have done with it. Uh, I should mention their, uh, they have a web player for Tick80, so they have a large catalog where you can go through playing games. Uh, Somebody made the original Super Mario game for it. Uh, I don't know how faithful it is, but somebody, lots of people do RPGs. Uh, and you know, for pushing it, somebody redid a low fidelity version of Portal in it. Um, very much something you couldn't do on a Game Boy because again, you can't draw directly to it. To the screen, what? Portal <laughs> um, So. Uh, Anyway, so quick tour of the TIC-80 platform. It has your basic prompt when you turn it on like an old computer would have. Uh, unfortunately, it has limited commands here, there. It's not like putting you straight into the programming like an Apple II or a Commodore 64 would have. Uh, it has a built-in code editor. This is way nicer than anything you would have been likely to use back in those days, but I will say, uh, if you pay the $10, it let, let makes it easy for you to use external editors, which are nicer still. Has built-in sprite editors. Has built-in tile map editors. Uh, if you want to go that way, which you probably do. Uh, it has a built-in sound effect instrument editor. I will say, while this is a little bit easier than the Game Boy was, um, it's still not simple, and you probably just want to find somebody's pre-existing library of sounds to reuse, just like I did when I did the Game Boy talk a year ago. Uh, and then uh, two different music editors. This one's more of a piano roll style. You're writing notes and going down. And this one, for people who really want to feel like it's the 80s again, they have a tracker. Um, so. Uh, if the Game Boy I did Pong, I thought it would be worth redoing that, but I took a different approach, and so this Pong sp will spend less time building up the Pong than I did last time. <laughs> so
So um, it ran right off the bat. Their instruction that player two uses the W and S key was not correct. <laughs> and when you run it, why is there a paddle in the middle of the screen? Uh, I suspect that this was more PICO 8 in their internal whatever passes for reasoning than TIC 80, but they're very close, as I said, so. Um, so, uh, let me pull up the, there we go. Um, let me mute that. The uh, wrong, wait. Uh, well, I hope I muted that. Um, so, run it is, oops, I'm sorry, the code I showed was the, um, simple example program that they start with. So here's this. No, I did not effectively mute it, I guess. Uh, I guess, let's try it. Don't want it to keep doing that, because that's awful. Do you really want to load the cart? Yes. Run. And so there we see the buggy one. So um, close game. Load pong 2.lua. Run. So here's the fixed one. Oops. Um, You're gonna lose job. <laughs> yeah, I'm losing to myself. Uh, that's how great I am at it. All right, so um, it was, in fact, just a matter of changing uh, this value to put the paddle over to the right, change the ball starting point, and I think there was one other place that had to be changed but I forget what it was, so uh, right here. So, I mean, reasonably close attempt from um, ChatGPT there. So, uh, yeah, I did show that. <laughs> so that's the brief introduction to the Tick 80. So summer of Tick 80, stupid slogan, we know it. What I'm picturing is six weeks of Tick 80 during the summer, not Six months, not an end, never ending meetup, which are great. This one, I hope, is a never ending one. I mean, this one being Tech Lancaster. Just six weeks, meeting once a week. We will meet, spend some time learning, we'll work on small games, assuming that anybody actually chooses to join me. We will do it alone or in groups as people want. Um, Pretty, would be pretty cool to do it in groups, I think. Uh, we will then present what we did in September. Also, if nobody chooses to join me, I guess there'll be an open slot in September, after all, for another <laughs> speaker. What might we do? I suggest thinking simple. I suggest something that does not require a lot of content authoring. The RPG screenshot I showed earlier strikes me as you'll never get anywhere trying to create the storyline and all of the things you would need for an RPG on it. So, think things like Hubert, if anyone remembers what that was. Asteroids, everyone hopefully knows what that is even though it's really old. Uh, missile Command, Bust a Move, uh, one of my favorite and my wife's favorite games, uh, maybe a racing game. Uh, also, think of combining ideas. Missile Command and Bust a Move. That is probably what I'm gonna work on unless somebody has a better idea that I wanna join at their team, assuming they want more people on their team. What? Uh, I think that there's a lot of th reasons to revisit older games. One is sometimes the version you remember is too hard to play anymore. Um, maybe you wanna add some feature to it uh, that you wish it already had, and then there's always the what can you do with blending it? A lot of people have gotten pretty far with saying, what if we took X and added an RPG to it? Uh, one game I also really liked was Puzzle Quest, which was what if we took Bejeweled and added an RPG to it? <laughs> yeah, that is a great way to deal with the difficulty of authoring content in six weeks. Uh, so I'm thinking Wednesdays. I'm thinking tentatively starting July 10th. Uh, I'm still working on a location here, assuming that that was even an option, which I assume Joel would probably allow that. I believe would end up clashing, so we might have to make it not actually six contiguous weeks. 
I uh, tried the Burley Bar because that's where the Crush Your Side Projects has been meeting. Uh, seemed kind of loud to really be doing any uh, much collaboration there. I'm open to other suggestions as well. Um, and of course, there is a contact on Slack. And I thought I'd be dragging this out to at least 15 minutes, but it looks like I didn't really hit that mark. So does anyone have questions, ideas, responses, suggestions? I, Alex, I believe you were first. Uh, so questions. So it looks like this just ran like in a, its own program. Is, this, is there any hardware that this exports to that you can play on? Um, so there are a number of things it will export to. I mean, it's only going to export to something relatively newer. Uh, so I believe it can export to Android. I don't know about iPhone. Uh, frankly, it doesn't have great touchscreen support, so I'm not real clear on how that's going to be working, to, but I did see that it was in there. Uh, it, it does have the controller support, though, so you can certainly do that, uh, you know, like if you have some sort of Android TV device. Um, you can s export standalone EXE, Mac files, Linux files uh, to distribute on, you know, however you want, including itch, I.O. Um, you can, uh, I'm sure there's more things than that. You can, I think I saw something about a 3DS exporter or something. So, oh, and of course there is a bare metal, there's both a, you know, Raspbian version and a bare metal version for Raspberry Pis. You know, so you skip the whole Linux, it's just go straight into this. I haven't tried it, but that seems like it could be a pretty cool way if you wanted to like have a computer for kids, like they get only a Tick80 as their computer. <laughs> um, and on a side note, uh, Make717 is doing a build your own retro console okay. project sometime this, later this summer for people who happen to cross over with that. Uh, so that could be cool to, you know, instead of being running emulators, just run a Tick80 on a dedicated nice little console box you built yourself. Um, I know Rob. <laughs> you know what? I'm hoping that that is ahead of me because the whole reason I did anything with Tick80 was because I had this idea of what would be a good way to get people to do silly little games for six weeks. And I thought, Tick80. So I have not actually written anything more complicated than Pong in it. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't read. <laughs> well, if you come, then I'll <laughs> love to see the ideas for that. I could consider it. I don't know. I'd have to, we'd have to discuss what the A, that actually meant. <laughs> sure. Joe. Apparently portal for somebody. Uh, it'd be interesting. I mean, it's on the website, so you can just go ahead and download it to poke around. Uh, people who don't X, who put it on the website means that it's, it's not maybe not an open source license, but it's effectively open source that because you, you can start poking around what, with the website version. So it'd be interesting to know how close they got to consuming that. It'd be interesting to know if that would end up being larger or smaller because you know it's not going to be compiled into 6502 assembly. It's going to be sitting there as most likely a Lua file. Yeah. I should say, unlike Pico 8, you're not limited to Lua. There's also JavaScript, Python, and a bunch of other more obscure ones. Uh, but Lua is where most of the momentum is. So. Um, you know, I guess whatever people want to do. Uh, Lua wouldn't. What? Fennel and Wren. Do those mean anything to you? <laughs> they don't mean a whole lot to me, but I remember seeing them on the list. I think there might have been TypeScript too, but that makes sense because it's just compiles to JavaScript, and JavaScript's already there. Uh, any other questions, suggestions, whatever? What? Uh, I believe they were eight by eight. So you're probably going to be doing a lot of making, uh, you know, f like say eight sprites together to make a Mario-sized character. Um, I'm sorry, somebody. Yes, Luke. Uh, yeah. Uh, the question about languages kind of. Uh, ah. 
you write Lua? Like, did you know Lua going into this? Or um, I have done a little bit with Lua in the past. Um, I don't love it a huge amount. Uh, my experience with that was the Love Toolkit, which is kind of also a different uh, play around with you know either generative art or video game type platform. And also with, uh, I believe it was, um, was it Open Resty, yeah. which was a plugin for Nginx to where you would write routing stuff with Lua. So very little, but it's it's really easy. This would probably end up being an appropriate thing to bring, uh, like a teenager to, provided they came with their parents, um, well, a parent or some guardian-ish person. I probably wouldn't dig too much into the exact relationship if I wasn't forced to. Uh, well, sorry, I was just thinking of like, you know, I, I could picture, say, an uncle and niece coming. So it's technically not a parent. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so is anyone interested in this? All right. I think it's yeah. cool if some of the meetings were remote. Like, I would be open to that. It would just make it easier for like, maybe six weeks in a row. Or yeah. Um, Yeah. Um, and then uh, there's a Slack channel already. I think there's like two people in it who haven't been super active about saying anything. So, uh, but that's probably the best way to coordinate that. What? I don't remember off the top of my head. No. <laughs> Um, well, the overlap is that we would be, as I said, presenting the results tentatively in September. Um, and uh, other than that, I mean, I don't know that it has a huge, I mean, it's, other, you know, uh, it's an experiment in the, like, you don't have to commit to doing things forever um, or for a year or whatever. If you have an idea, uh, you know, I obviously chose a pretty frivolous one. It could be a more serious one if you want. You know, try six weeks or try six months. Don't feel like you have to commit. I think that something that we could certainly be doing to help build the community here is consider more short-term things with a definite ending uh, so, that's, you know, so that people know if they want to do it, they have to do it then and that they don't have to do it forever or just ma randomly disappear because they got tired of doing it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I was tempted to, but ended up backing out of the idea of just making the whole presentation be a Tick80 program, but uh, I didn't have enough time to fully embrace that. Ne yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, um, Nobody has anything else, then. Sorry, I, I have one quick question. Absolutely. Are you you have to pay $10 to get the code out of the emulator somehow? Well, like, no. Okay. You can copy and paste it. Okay. Uh, and their <laughs> binary <laughs> cartridge format yeah. still has the code as plain text in it. It's just not like a plain text file that you can go in and edit. Like, it would be pretty dicey to open this, their binary file, yeah. and try and edit it with something else. Um, yeah, that's why I went ahead and did the ten dollars so that the it would, the raw source code would, could be there and um, you know make it easier if I want to use Emacs. Uh, it's not that their editor is bad, it, but sometimes it's nice to have say fifty lines instead of twenty lines of your uh, project displayed. So. Yes. 
I like that in theory, but I don't always practice it. Alex, so. I totally get your hardware question, though, because emulators <laughs> suck. Don't say <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much, and um, we'll see you all next month. Thank you, guys.